Okay, so we've sensed a high static pressure between this point and that. It was about 0 0.7. That's a very high static pressure. In addition to that, we find evidence of perhaps less than ideal installation. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull out that blower motor to get a visual confirmation of the clogged secondary heat exchanger. Sometimes you just got to do it. Mm -hmm. So right there, we're already getting some visual evidence of the extent of dust that has been going through this unit. All right, Derek, that's going to reduce your efficiency. Those propellers need to be cleaned. They'd be blowing as much CFM as possible. Right now, they're caked up. You can put your finger on it like this. Yeah, I'll be a snowman. So we're gonna go ahead and what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna take this thing off right here so I can pull it all the way out. Okay, so right here, this is the confirmation we needed that our static pressure probe was uh, giving us information without visually confirming it. That's why you use static pressure probes so you don't have to take it out like this. I took this out for an instructional method. Sometimes you just gotta do the dirty work in order to make it vis visually apparent because the numbers themselves can't be interpreted as readily. But this will be a source material showing the real life implications of a high static pressure reading. Clearly you see all that gunk on that secondary heat exchanger. That's gonna affect the ability of this furnace to heat. As it's attempting to heat, you're gonna hit high limit and it's gonna cut out. It's gonna cut out continuously. Moreover, that coil right there, according to some assessment online, that's a upflow. It's not a multipoise, so it's misapplied in this application. This, is, this furnace is gonna need a little bit of tough love infection yes that's the importance of having static pressure probes and knowing how to use them anybody could have them but you got to know how to use them and articulate the value 